you have started a chain reaction that could bring about the next apocalypse. <gasps> How about I tell you another story about the mummy that was never mummified? Here's The Mummy Returns. <laughs> It's not like it sounds. Uh, it's exactly how it sounds. So back before anyone wore armor to battle, there was this guy called the Scorpion King that tried to take over the world. But when they got beat, instead of going home, they just wandered around the desert and died. Good chaps, every one of them, too. Except the Scorpion King. He sold his soul to the Egyptian devil in exchange for him being able to defeat his enemies with an army of man puppies. But the second they conquered the last city, Anubis called them all back to hell, which serves him right because he waited until his last soldier died before he made the deal. Bastard. But yes, but he only awakens once every 5,000 years. 5,000 years later, we meet back up with Rick O'Connell, who's exploring, of course, the city where the Scorpion King died. He hears a noise that he wants to shoot, but it turns out to only be his son, Alex. I think I'll kill you. <laughs> he sends him away, and then finds Evie to talk about how annoying he is. She thinks she found a tomb, so Rick knocks down the wall with his manliness, and sure enough, it's a closet full of mummies. And because she had a dream... You dream about dead guys? She knows that the secret room has a secret room, so they go in. Then Evie has a vision from the past of some chick leaving a vault, but conveniently standing to the side, showing her the combination for the lock on the door. This was all preordained thousands of years ago. But she remembers the combination, opens the door, and they find a shrine to the guy that stormed the city twice, killed a bunch of people, and got sent to hell for it. Go to hell! In a box, they find the Scorpion King's bracelet, but because they didn't read the inscription on the lid, they trigger a booby trap to cause a river to be diverted into the tomb. Oops. We are in serious trouble. Somehow the O'Connells manage to outrun the water until they get to a dead end. We are in very serious trouble. But unknown to them, some bad guys showed up looking for him, and Alex took it upon himself to be a dick to the men that seemed to want to kill his parents. Really? Yeah. He gets caught shooting him with a slingshot, and one of the guys is going to stab him for it. Jack's gonna make a nice fillet out of you, my son. But their boss is running from the flood, and they just leave him. But not before they cut a brace holding the scaffolding, which falls hitting a pillar. The lightweight wooden scaffolding then forces a giant stone pillar to fall into the next one, and they all come down like dominoes. But the last one doesn't fall, so the eight-year-old tries to hold it up. But he obviously can't, and it falls, breaking a wall and releasing his parents. What a coincidence. The bad guys then show up to Hominoptera, where some people get excited when they pull out a giant dried booger from the ground. Apparently the booger is Emotep, and the reincarnation of Inoxuna Moon is trying to bring him back, but they want to wait until they can give him the Scorpion King's bracelet as a present first. Somehow the bad guys know that they survived the flood and are already on their way back to London, but made no attempt to get the bracelet from them. And luckily for the O'Connells, the Magi with a really good vision is there to overhear that the people are going after him. Coincidence. So the O'Connells arrive back at their mansion in London, luggage still in hand, where they discuss going back to Egypt. So why did they even leave? I don't know. Look, you can either tag along with me or you can stay here. And it looks like they might have to, since Alex puts on the bracelet and it's telling him to go back. Seems like fate to me. And apparently nobody else can see this movie projector-like image. Hey, just start the cartoon! Hey, you wanna shut up? Plus, the bad guys must have been on the same flight as them and show up to get it. Go away. They mistaken Jonathan for Rick, and when Anoxida Moon 2.0 asks where Evie is, he hits on her, even when he has a knife to his throat. Did I mention I was single now? But then Rick comes in, and when he calls Jonathan Jonathan, they still don't believe him, and then play hot potato with a poisonous snake. Only if they bite you. Downstairs, Evie and Alex get attacked, but the Magi, whose name is apparently Ardith, shows up and helps them fight off what appears to be a clown car's worth of swordsmen. Hey, Joes! Hell no. Bad jokes. Is Rick the only one allowed to have a gun because he's an American? No. One guy brought a machine gun and traps Rick in the bathroom. But once they get the box and Evie, they just leave knowing that they left people alive who know where they're going and have multiple reasons to stop their plan. Ardith tells Rick that they plan on resurrecting Emotep, meaning that once again, he ditched all of his brothers to go work alone to stop him. But it turns out that the guy in charge of the bad guys is the curator of the British Museum, making yet another curator in a secret society. Secret society. Secret society. And when they get to the museum, Ardith sees Rick's tattoo and tells him that he's also a Magi. But Rick tells him that somebody forced it on him when he was an orphan, but also remembered a secret code he was supposed to say if anyone ever noticed. Must be fate. So all of Emotep's groupies came to London, and even brought his booger so they can bring him back. Why didn't they just resurrect him in Egypt and then he could help them get the bracelet? 
I don't know. I mean, that would make more sense considering they had both the Book of the Dead and the Book of the Living. This just might work. They need someone who can defeat the Scorpion King, and Emotep's the toughest guy they know. But they have no idea if he'll even be able to do it, or if he'll kill everyone with Anubis' army if he gets control of it. Now, this might not be a bad plan if they knew the Scorpion King was on his way, but they don't know that. No trace of him has ever been found before. No, no artifacts, no archival evidence. Rumor is that he's supposed to come back every 5,000 years, but... He's supposed to be pure myth. So they're just bringing back an evil guy on purpose? Yes. So they're bringing back an evil guy that might kill them to fight another evil guy that might kill them. And even if the first evil guy kills the second evil guy, he might kill them. And it all makes perfect sense now. Yep. Might have been a better idea to just found Emotep and kept him in the museum in a break glass in case of emergency situation, and they could have just lived out into old age. But I guess they'd rather play Russian roulette with five chambers loaded. Anyway, so they bring back Emotep, and the Nox in the Moon comes in, and Emotep's like, you're not her, even though he thought Evie was her in the last story. And speaking of Evie, she's there as a sacrifice for Emotep. But Rick stops that plan, and they get her out, because this museum has more explosives laying around than you'd think. Oh, good. Good for you. Good thing to have. Emotep finds some sand and makes some of those big mouth soldiers to go get him. And Jonathan and his cowardice managed to break the key in Rick's car. So instead of hotwiring it, he went down the street, hotwired a double-decker bus so they can make their getaway. Two of the mummies never make it on the bus, but they only managed to take out the last two because they love doing that big mouth thing and the writer liking cartoons. <laughs> And once they stop on the Tower Bridge for some reason, the bad guys show up and take Alex, even though they had no idea what they were even driving. It's also very convenient that Alex was mesmerized by whatever was right in front of the door so they could make a quick getaway. It must have been fate. Oh, they're going to take him hostage so that they can't stop him. No. They open the box and one of the guys assumed the kid was wearing it. Based on what? Hell if I know. I mean, he was pretending to protect the box when they were being attacked. I guess that's enough. Well, Anox in the Moon tells Emotep that she can't wait to rule the world together, but little does she know that he's going to bring his girlfriend soul back and let her use her body, but that doesn't stop him from making out with her while he's still a rotting corpse. That happens a lot around here. The curator then says that the O'Connells have something called the Scepter of Osiris, but Emotep says it won't be an issue since he'll be too powerful by the time they see him again. Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. On a train to Karnak, Emotep tells Alex that if he doesn't enter a certain temple by the seventh day, that the bracelet will suck his life out. And even though he knows Alex can understand him, he took the time to learn English to properly scare him. But first, the bad guys from the temple have shown up with Emotep's organ jars, even though he was never mummified. He was still alive when they started eating him. But he gets a skin back as the O'Connells charter a speed hot air balloon from Rick's friend Izzy to take him to Karnak. But Izzy doesn't want to help, so he uses all the locks. But all the locks are no match for Rick's manliness, and he convinces Izzy to help. Cool. You give me that gold stick there and you can shake my head, wax my legs, and use me for a surfboard. So it's a good thing they brought the scepter with them. Ah, uh, lucky. Alex wants to escape, so he has to go to the bathroom. And he gets rid of his guard by accusing him of being a pedo. You look. The window's barred, but the toilet just leaks on the track, so the eight-year-old rips the toilet out of the floor and pulls the emergency brake. And as Alex runs away, the guards that were riding on top of the train all start shooting at the child that they know their Dark Lord needs alive. But as luck would have it, Alex stopped the train in front of the ancient city that they needed to go to, actually saving them a few hours of travel time since they don't have to come back from the next station. What a coincidence. So he runs to the spot that reveals the next location, but Emotep was there to see it, so he can't stall for his parents to show up. But he won't have to, since they decide to camp for the night. Emotep starts the resurrection spell bringing a Nox in the Moon back, but it triggers a memory from Evie's past as the Pharaoh's daughter. She witnessed the murder of her dad, and then apparently jumped off the balcony. Which makes you wonder if she was doing all the flips on the balloon when she was remembering the fight she had with the Nox in the Moon. I mean, I guess it would be better than throwing daggers at dicks. But she learned that she was supposed to protect the bracelet, and that's why she was able to find it. Sounds like fate to me. Evie is a Pharaoh's daughter reincarnated? Does she look like her? Yeah, her and Anox and the Moon look exactly the same, even down to the hair length. Queen Nefertiti? Nefertiti. I've heard it both ways. Then why would Emotep have called her Anox and the Moon? Anox and the Moon. When he should have recognized her as Nefertiri. He took eyes from a blind guy. What do you expect? Not a damn thing. But what you should be asking is why did Emotep have a secret rendezvous with the Pharaoh's side piece that suddenly got upgraded to Fiancé out in the open where anyone could see it? Come on, 
when someone's watching. The next morning, the O'Connell crew get to Karnak to find that the bad guys have already left, but Alex left him a clue to where they're headed. A detailed sandcastle of the ruins he saw for 10 seconds. And of course his guard didn't notice it, because he has worse parental skills than I have. I shall truly enjoy killing you. He doesn't even notice the child losing his clothes to mark his messages. He has to catch him in the act, which doesn't matter anymore because Emotep spots the balloon in a canyon. He makes a giant wall of water to go after the balloon and makes sure to put his face on it so they know it's him. What a incredible seismic narcissist! But remember, this is a speed hot air balloon, and water is slow in the story, so they are able to turn and get away. And wouldn't you know it, they made the right split second decision turn that they couldn't have seen, and it turns out to be the one that leads to the oasis of Amsher. There's no such thing as a coincidence. But before they can celebrate, the water wall apparently doubled back and is wiggling through the side canyon. And this time it gets him and completely demolishes the balloon, but none of them seem to have a scratch. Rick tells Izzy to fix the balloon while they go save their son, and Jonathan decides to take the scepter of Osiris with him, because why not make sure your hands are full when going into a dangerous temple that you're expecting a fight in? That, and this dude is taking it because he doesn't want Izzy to have it, but he's walking into a pyramid with potentially billions of dollars worth of gold in it. I have no idea what you're talking about. But didn't the curator say it was important? Yes, but... Shut up! He doesn't know that. None of them know that. He's only taking it so they can use it later because the writer didn't make it that they were racing to get the scepter because it's the only thing that can kill the Scorpion King. Instead, he just wrote that people like the pretty stick. One of these days, I'm gonna have a stick of my own. Anyway, the whole trip, Ardeth has been sending messages to the 12 armies of the Magi via Carrier Pigeon telling them their location. So I really hope for their sake that they didn't have to backtrack anywhere on the journey because the whole Magi militia has been following their trail. But when they hear a shot, Ardeth assumes that someone shot Horus down and wants to leave to go tell the armies himself how to get to the Oasis. But Rick says he needs them to save Alex, and Ardeth is like, okay, saving one kid is way more important than having an army to fight the army of the undead man puppies, who will most likely kill said kid when they arise with nothing there to stop them. But actually, Alex's guard wants to kill him now and asks his boss if he can. And that boss says to ask his boss, and Emotep's like, I don't care. We just need the bracelet at this point. So his guard, who isn't guarding him, is like, nice. I'm gonna go kill an eight-year-old. With pleasure. But you would think at least one of these experts on ancient Egypt would think it would be best to wait until they were actually through the spooky forest that has already had a bunch of people die in booby traps. Sorry, my mistake! But as he goes to murder the child, a storm hits, and an army of undead tiny monkeys attack. And even though these things have knives and poison dart guns, this dude still goes looking for Alex to kill him. Rick gets him at the last second, but you would think with as many people as Evie and Jonathan had to take out to get him to Alex, they would have just taken out the guy who was about to stab him. Patience is a virtue! And Ardeth fights the guards, while none of the pygmy zombies attack him. Ardeth is able to kill him, and then Jonathan kills some dude that tries to kill him after. I guess he learned how to shoot after that ordeal in Hominoptera. Get out of my way or I'm gonna shoot you in the face! He means it, he shot someone before! So the family reunites as the tiny army chases him. After they cross a log bridge, Rick pulls out some trusty pocket dynamite and blows it up. But the sun is starting to rise, and now they need to race the sun to get Alex in the pyramid before the light touches it. So they just so happen to come out of the jungle directly in front of the entrance and make it just in time. They're also extremely lucky that sunlight doesn't work like normal sunlight in this place, because the top of that pyramid would have been the first thing illuminated. It's science. But the bracelet falls off Alex's arm, and he just throws it. I mean, it's not like the bad guys want this thing or anything. Give it to me now. Jonathan and Evie show up to celebrate their victory, and then an Oxen of Moon shows up and stabs Evie, and she dies. Please, come back. Come back. Clearly, you were destined to protect this woman. Sorry. The wrong guy. Oh, a main character died in a story about resurrection. Whatever could they do? Well, if you can't figure that out for yourself, an Oxen of Moon waves at Alex with the same hand she's using to carry the Book of the Dead. You're not a subtle man. We don't have time for subtle. So while they're crying, the curator finds the bracelet that Emotep and Anax and the Moon must have just walked past, and he takes it into the temple. Emotep stands on a scorpion logo on the floor and gets all his powers taken from him. But he can still jiggle stuff, but he's basically just some dude now. 
And I bet right now he's wishing he hadn't been so egotistical when the curator told him about the scepter. But the curator doesn't know that Emotep is just a dude and awakens the Scorpion King and his army. We also see that Ardith has shown up with the Magi army. But if the bird got shot, how did they know where to go? Eh, apparently after he saved Alex, he just went looking for him, and they just happened to be close enough for him to get to them on foot, in a desert, in less than an hour. Well, sounds like fate to me. But it finally dawns on Alex that they can bring his mom back from the dead, so they carry her corpse to the pyramid looking for the book. Luckily, the ancient god Anubis, who built this pyramid himself, was sure to make proper signage for any tourist that might visit in the future. This way, it's Scorpion King. Jonathan then lets a Nox and a Moon beat him up, so Alex can steal the Book of the Dead that somehow doesn't need a key anymore. When she grabs weapons, Jonathan tells Alex to speed up an Ancient Resurrection spell, letting her know what they're up to. But he does the spell, and Evie saves Jonathan from getting dead. A couple of years ago, this would have seemed really strange to me. Ardeth tells his guys to attack the undead man puppy army, who are just standing around because the Scorpion King hit the snooze button and hasn't ordered them to do anything yet. And they beat him up pretty quick, but that was just the first wave. Another army popped up like the next town over, and they're on their way. And then Rick finds Emotep ringing the Scorpion King's dinner bell and tries to stop him. And they fight until the Scorpion King comes out, and after talking a big game to everyone, Emotep totally bitches out and pledges his servitude. I will do whatever you ask. He then doubles down and tells him that Rick is there to kill him. But he gets away from the Scorpion King when he runs past the Curator, and the man Scorpion takes a little break to overkill him. All right, now he's trying to scare me. Rick then runs into a room that has detailed instructions on how to kill the Scorpion King. Convenient. I thought Anubis took his soul to hell. Why would there be detailed instructions on how to kill somebody who's dead? It's a uh, prophecy. See, the Scepter of Osiris is actually a collapsible spear, and someone who has a tattoo in the same spot Rick does can use it to kill the Scorpion King when he comes back. Well, what happens if somebody without the tattoo uses it? It's not like the spear can get less pointy based on who uses it. No, but they can't play catch with it. Jonathan figures out how to open it and throws it, but Emotep catches it, and then Rick catches it after Emotep throws it. And it's a good thing it was moving in slow motion, or he would have never been able to grab it, seeing how he wasn't even looking at it when it was right there. Okay, now I'm a believer. Now if Emotep would have landed it, he would have control of the army, but he would still be just a dude. At that point, Rick could have shot him and sent the army back to hell. But no, Rick catches it and then uses it to save himself from falling into a pit of souls. He also just happens to kill the Scorpion King, and Emotep's reaction is a bit over the top. Come back, come back. The army outside also vanishes, and the Magi are all safe. And now the oasis is imploding into the pyramid, basically causing it to collapse. But Rick and Emotep have somehow fallen on the same side of the pit and are hanging on while souls try to drag him to hell. Evie runs out to save Rick and pulls him up by using his super strong neck. <laughs> his neck did not break! And then Noxuna Moon runs away, leaving behind the man who just went through two stories of trying to bring her back from the dead. So he just gives up and goes to hell. But then she falls into a river of scorpions and dies. The O'Connell crew have to get out of the pyramid, so they go out a convenient sixth floor balcony and climb up to the top. And just as they admit defeat, Izzy shows up with a fixed balloon to save them. No, no, you gotta respect, but I mean, this thing was filled with gas, not hot air gas. I need gas to get this thing off the ground. Where am I gonna get gas from around here, huh? There is a fine line between coincidence and fate. They all get on board, except Jonathan, who falls in such a way that he can grab a diamond about the size of a throw pillow just as the pyramid gets engulfed. So all of them are alive, happy, and rich. Yippee. Yo, oh, that was amazing! I'd love to know how they do that. Hey, why don't you hit like and subscribe, and then check out another video. As long as I don't get shot. Last time I got shot in the ass! I'm in mourning for my ass! I knew it. I'm gonna get shot.